kiddos, welcome back. We're going to wrap up our exam review with doing just a little bit of nuclear chemistry for you. Um, we're going to first do some uh, alpha and beta emissions. We're going to balance nuclear equations. Remember, when you balance nuclear equations, the atoms don't balance like they do in ordinary chemical reactions. However, the atomic number and the mass numbers will. So whenever we see a beta emission, remember we symbolize that oftentimes with a zero over negative one e um, in our nuclear equations, and alpha would be four over two he. Okay, so it looks like in the first example we have aluminum 28. Now let's write down the atomic number for aluminum here, so we'll find that on the periodic table. It's like aluminum's atomic number, kiddos, is 13. And it's going to give off a beta particle. So if you remember, in beta emissions, we have this 0 over negative 1 e symbol here. And in order to stabilize itself, we end up with a neutron uh, transforming itself into a proton to change the neutron to proton ratio. And when a neutron transforms itself into a proton, the atomic number actually goes up by one. So we're going to go up to an atomic number of 14. So the new element that is produced has 14 protons. And the atomic number is going to remain the same. See, we change the number of neutrons and protons, but once we add them together, we still end up with an atomic number, in this case, of 28. Now let's look and see what element number 14 is on the periodic table. And so 14 is the element silicon. So SI. Of course, a quick way to check your work is just to check to make sure that your atomic numbers balance and your mass numbers balance. So 28 equals 28 plus 0, and 13 equals 14 and a negative 1. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Alrighty. Now, um, when a neutron is transformed into a proton, we end up with a negatively charged electron being shot out, of, shot out of the nucleus at a very high rate of speed, and that's that beta particle there that we symbolized, and that's the thing that can cause um, a molecule or atom to become ionized, ionized when it's hit by that particle moving so quickly. All right, it looks like in the next example, I'm going to give you the product nucleus of thorium-234. Now let's go ahead and find thorium on our periodic table. It's way down here at the bottom. It's atomic number 90. So let's put the atomic number 90 in there. And instead of writing that symbol for an alpha particle, let's put 4 over 2 He. Because as you recall, an alpha particle is identical to the nucleus of a helium atom. Of course, the big difference is its kinetic energy. It's moving lots, lots faster. So, um, in this case, we are going to uh, lose two protons and two neutrons from that original nucleus. And when that happened, that produced thorium-90. So that means the product that we began with had two additional protons, so its atomic number was 92. And in addition to that, it had two additional neutrons, so its mass number went up by four, so that's 238. Now let's take a look and see if we can find what element 92 is. So we're going to go to the periodic table, and element 92 is uranium. So we began with uranium, and that emits this alpha particle from the nucleus at a very high rate of speed. Now just as a quick review, um, alpha particles have a positive charge, Beta particles have a negative charge, and we learned from Rutherford's lead block experiment that beta particles are attracted to the neg uh, positive pole of a magnet, and alpha particles are attracted to the negative pole. We also learned that uh, beta particles have a greater penetrating ability than alpha particles because their size is so much smaller. All right, next up, looks like we're starting with bismuth 210. Let's look up its atomic number the atomic number of bismuth. So let's find bismuth here on the periodic table, kiddos. And we can search and search and search. Have you found bismuth yet? Good job, right over there, atomic number 83. 
So we're going to put an 83 down here. Looks like it gives off an alpha particle, 4 over 2 He, so it will emit two protons and two neutrons from its nucleus. So the atomic number of the new particle will only be 81, and the mass will go down by 4, because remember it lost two protons and two neutrons, so now it's 206. So let's see what element 81 is. So go back to our periodic table, and element 81 looks like it's thallium. TL. Okay, let's just check our math to make sure everything we did was correct. We started with 83 as our atomic number on the reactant side, ended up with 81 plus 2, which is 83. Our mass was 210, ended up with 206 plus 4 is 210. Yep, I feel good about that. All right, the last example here looks like sulfur 35 gives off a beta particle. Let's look up sulfur's atomic number. Looks like it's 16 kiddos, so it has 16 protons, and a beta particle, remember, 0 over negative 1e is its symbolism here. So the product here will have 17 protons, 17 and negative 1 gives you my 16, and the mass number does not change, so it stays at 35. What element has the atomic number 17? Well, that's pretty easy to find. Looks like 17 is chlorine. So CL. Okay, so be prepared to do a few of those on your exam. Not a whole lot, just a couple. All right, once again, the trick to these is making sure that the atomic number, these numbers on the bottom, all balance, and the mass numbers, the numbers on top, all balance. And they do on those equations. Also be aware of their penetrating ability. The bigger ones uh, cannot penetrate as well as the tinier ones. And also don't forget about gamma radiation. We usually don't include that in nuclear decay reactions because the mass number is unchanged and the atomic number is unchanged. It's just ionizing radiation, uh, high energy ionizing radiation, photons of those particles, which are considered massless. Okay, we also talked a bit about half-life. And so let's just do a couple of quick half-life questions in review. Strontium-85 is used for bone scans, has a half-life of 64 days. If we begin with a 120-gram sample of strontium-85 and we store it for 192 days, how many grams of strontium-85 remains? So let's see, 64 plus 64, that's 128 days. That would be my first half-life, right? And then if I add another 64 days to that, it gets me to 192 days, which is where I ended up. So it looks like I'm going to go through two half-lives. So if I start with 120 grams, after 64 days... Oh, sorry, looks like I'm going to go through three half-lives. I messed you up there. After six, 64 days, that's one half-life. I'll have 60 grams remaining. And then... Let's put days there. I almost messed that up. After another 64 days, I'll have 30 grams left, so that's two half-lives, so that's a total of 128 days so far. And after another 64 days, so now I have a total of 192 days, I'll have 15 grams remaining. Okay, so after the first 64 days, I'll have, that's one half-life, then 128 days, that would be two half-lives, then 64 days later would be my 192 days, which is three half-lives. So I go from 120 to half of that, which is 60, that's my first half-life, to half of that, which is 30, that's my second half-life, to half of that, which is only 15, which would be a total of 192 days, or three half-lives. So we did that in a confusing way. Hopefully you're okay with that. Let's do the last one here, try to do better for you. Iodine-131, it's used to diagnose and treat thi thyroid conditions. Its half-life is eight days. How many days does it take for the amount of iodine-131 to decrease from 80 grams to 5 grams? So let's see how many half-lives it would go through. So 80 grams to 40 grams, that would take eight days, wouldn't it? Right, because my half-life is eight days. And then 40 grams to 20 grams would be eight more days, right? Another half-life, so 16 days so far. 
20 grams to 10 grams is another half-life. So that takes eight more days. And we've almost gotten to five. And 10 grams to five grams would take another eight days. So how many days total did it take to go from 80 to five grams? Well, eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. That seems to me to be 32 days, or one, two, three, four half-lives. Okay, kiddos? Do you feel good about that? Yeah, pretty straightforward. I think you guys will do fine on the nuclear chemistry portion of the exam. We're just touching on it for right now. Alrighty, good luck on the test, kiddos. See you soon. Bye-bye.